clear my throat before you record. Do you want it's some on. water? It's on, Brother Sam. What? Okay, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Well, I, I'm glad to be here. I, before I start, I forgot. I was supposed to pass these out. I got to get off. Okay. Go ahead. Um, you want to pass? No, you're reading. Yeah, I'll pass them out. You will. Okay. Just pass those out, everybody, wants one or two. Because I'm going to have to read at the appropriate time some scriptures. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Deb. You can put that behind you. Uh, glory to God. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Very bless your heart. If, uh, if you get a profit reward, uh, do that. You didn't hear me, so you missed the reward. <laughs> what is that? that? You get a prophet's reward. Right ah, there. Hallelujah. Okay, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Tonight, I'm serving as a bridge. A bridge. I'm standing in the gap. I'm, I'm a bridge between Mark and the book of Acts. Amen. <laughs> and here I am. Our palate and, cleanser. Uh, Pastor Kana asked me to stand in the gap between these two books. I said, what do you want me to talk about? What do you want me to cover? And she says, anything you want. Uh -oh, blew my mind. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you, that will blow, my mind exploded. Um, <clears throat> anything is a big word. Yeah. Uh, she used it. Uh, and this is a big book. Mm -hmm. And there are a thousand things you can talk about. Mm -hmm. You can teach them. More than a thousand. Ten thousand. And it's a big book and it's full of good stuff. Amen. And so I appreciate the opportunity, frankly. I used to teach all the time, some of you know me, I used to preach all the time, and every two times a week at least and more, but uh, I don't get a lot of opportunities, so I might be a little rusty. <laughs> uh, I hope not. But anyway, I, I asked God, you know, about this thing, uh, and, and when she said, anything you want, and looking in my eyes, I said, Uh, kind of on my mind uh, a scripture and it's Matthew 11 11 I believe it that where Jesus says um, at, no excuse me it's John I'm sorry I forgot. John 14 14 where Jesus said ask anything in my name and I will do it anything and I uh, said okay uh, ask anything in my name and, 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 and you think about it, it requires you look at the context. Context is vital. Context is everything. The yeah. verse before that, uh, he said, Jesus said, ask anything that will glorify the Father in the Son. And that's the context. It makes yeah. all the difference in the world. Yeah. Uh, Pastor Connor had no context. So <clears throat> that gives me free reign. I thought about what are we supposed to talk about? Uh, let me just say next week, because there's very few people here, but next week there's going to be a, an opening of, uh, of the book of Acts. And there we're going to discover the Father's promise, what the Father has promised. Yes, In hallelujah. Luke 24. And I'm excited about it. Yes. I hope people show up. The 24th chapter of Luke, at the end of it, Jesus said, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And uh, so that's powerful. And that it begins next Wednesday. Uh, but Jesus also told them, 
You'll have to wait. Yep. Go to Jerusalem and wait. And that's what we got to do. <laughs> we got to wait. But next week, Lord willing, it will be, it will uh, come. By the way, I was thinking about the book of Acts, and, and uh, I was thinking about all those people that were complaining about how long it took to get through Mark. <laughs> they said, are we ever going to get through the book of Mark? <laughs> well, you know, the book of Acts has no ending. <laughs> There's no Amen. ending. Amen. Amen. Uh, to the book of Acts. <laughs> Well, actually, it will end. I shouldn't say that. That's not true. It's going to end with a shout. Amen. It's going to end with the voice of an archangel. Amen. It's going to end at the last trump sounds. Amen. And it's going to end when the Lord Jesus comes down. And we are lifted up. Amen. To be with him forever and ever. That's when it's going to end. That's not what I'm going to talk about tonight, but I'm just going to, <laughs> and I just got to thinking about it. Tonight I want to talk about your heart. Where is your heart? Let's pray a minute. I just, Father, I thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to speak to your people. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've given your servant something to say. And you've given him your word. I thank you, Father, for that. Amen. I pray that the lips will be anointed for the servant. Hearts, hearts will be softened and open, Lord, yes, that they'll Jesus. hear what you're saying. Lord, I can only say words, but you can teach them, Holy Spirit. You can teach them. And I ask that you do that, Lord Jesus. Teach us all tonight. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Do what you will with us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. For it's in your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to God. <clears throat> Amen. Now, by heart, I mean not that thing beaten inside of you, of course. Uh, it's biblically, we're talking about the center core of your being, the, the, the heart of the thing. It, it, it's different uh, scripturally. And uh, how God deals with the heart. <clears throat> it's who you really are. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. It's who you really are. <clears throat> All right. Let me, I got to start again, right? No. <laughs> I'm uh, no, uh, we're going we're gonna to continue on this. <clears throat> your heart is your central core of who you really are. It affects everything in your life. Your moral and your emotional state. Your mind, your body, and your spirit. We speak of the heart. The Bible talks. It uses them interchangeably. So it's very important. It's a full range of the emotions. As the scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What did God say about David? What did God say about David? He's a man after his own heart. Mm -hmm. A man after his own heart. So the heart is important to God. There's an old song, old secular song. I used... No, I didn't say it. But it's... <laughs> You're close to me, dear. But where is your heart? And that, that, that's the, uh, uh, the very important thing. You're, you can be close, but with God, you can't be close. With God, your heart has to be right. You can't be close to God if your heart isn't right. Amen. You might be close to your girlfriend, whatever. <clears throat> but scripturally, you cannot be close to God unless your heart is right. Uh, Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart. 
Amen. For they shall what? See God. See God. And so, pure in heart, you can see God. I want to play a Keith Green song and get the get this going. I want to see if I can do it. If my ear phones are off. Give me a moment, and I'll see if I can pull it up <laughs> and play it. Skip the commercial. <laughs> It, it, it's a song that I, I've loved and what? <clears throat> what's going on? I, I may not be able to get it. Oh, we're not there, that's right. I don't have Wi-Fi in here. Mm. That's the problem. Well, Keith Green wrote a song, created me a clean heart. Actually, he didn't write it. <laughs> the King one. David wrote it. Mm -hmm. But it, it, uh, uh, and, uh, it's, a, it's such a moving song. It would have set the atmosphere. It would have set, uh, because he has a good heart, or had a good heart. He was a man who walked with God, I am convinced, in Melody. And they've done a lot of good work out of Plano, <clears throat> Texas. But anyway, it created me a clean heart, oh God, and create and, and, and renew, renew a right spirit, spirit within, within, within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, Amen. and renew a right spirit within me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I, I, I can't help it. <laughs> and that, I love that song. It's a chorus. But anyway, um, the Bible references to the heart over a thousand times. The heart is referred to over a thousand times in the Bible. Amen. So it must be important. Who's got Luke 16, 15? Would you read it out loud? I mean, really, really loud. <laughs> and he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Wow. What men esteem is an abomination to God. But your heart is what is important. Amen. 1 Samuel 16, 7. Please read that loudly. Honey, I have it, and I forgot my glasses. <laughs> Uh oh. I'll try this if I can. First Samuel 16, 7. I'll get it. Will you start it for me so I'll know where seven is? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll read it for you. Oh, okay. That's nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Then I gotta find first Samuel 16. Uh verse 7, I gotta say. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord look, does not look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Amen. That is so powerful. The most important thing to God is a condition of the heart. <clears throat> Jesus died for your heart. Amen. I just, isn't that amazing? Yes. That's what he died for. Yes. Proverbs 4.23, please. Yeah. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Out of it are the issues of life. The heart is the wellspring yeah. of life. It all comes from inside. Amen. Out of the heart. And Matthew 12, 34 through 37. I got that. <clears throat> Matthew 12, 
<clears throat> o generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. The power of life and death <clears throat> is in the tongue. Um, yeah. it, it, it's amazing. We, we can be hung by our tongue. Amen. And, and by that I mean what's in the heart can come out of your mouth, will come out of your mouth, Amen. and that will hang you yeah. many times. Yeah. So out of the mouth, the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, I, I, I watch the news, and I listen to people, and I go places, and I go places where <clears throat> worldly people congregate many times. And I listen to them. I hear what they're saying. I, I see what's coming out. I hear what's coming out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. And I see their actions. And I, it, it, it's grievous what I see. Uh, uh, the heart condition is revealed in their words and their actions. Amen. Never in my lifetime did I dream this is off the car and out of the mouth. I never dreamed that I would see what I'm seeing and hear the filth and that garbage that, that's going on. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had no idea that there was that much evil in the hearts of people. Well, it's coming out now. Yeah. And you see it all around. I mean, it's everywhere. Amen. Mm -hmm. I've never witnessed such widespread wickedness as I'm seeing now. Mm -hmm. Violence, hatred, lasciviousness, lawlessness, mm -hmm. total godless, godlessness, blindness to the truth. Our society is totally blind. I mean, in the world. And there's, and, and, and it seems to me and I, I, there, there's little discernment within the church as to what's going on. I'm going, wow, I've been to a number of churches in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you, 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 but uh, I, I, I've never seen anything like this. Amen. And even within the church, the saints, uh, <clears throat> I just look at what's going on. And now we have the Roe v. Wade thing. Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. Look at what's happening. I go, God. Oh, the, the Supreme Court, there's such anger, such violence, such, I, I, I don't know, just, just, just madness over the Supreme Court that they might overturn Roe v. Wade. They might take from the women the right to kill their baby for any reason. I never dreamed it would happen. But I, 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 I can't, I cannot, and I'm amazed at what I see in the world and the evil. And you know, this is what the world calls many times normal people. Normal people, everyday people, just turn into monsters. Something like this happens. And that's just one thing. I could name a whole bunch of stuff, but uh, it's not just abortion. It's bringing out all this stuff. Uh, it's uh, it's um, in the church, divorce. Uh, in the church, there's all kinds of things going on that I see in the world. I go, what happened? See, your church, your bride, Lord. 
Amen. I, I, it, it, it grieves me. I'm not happy about it. I have holy indignation about it because the church is where we expect to see the best, where we expect to see good hearts. But there's all this going on and outside the church is just horrible. The looting, lying, uh, all kind of lawlessness. But the hearts of men is desperately evil. Romans 3.10 says, There is none righteous, no, not one. Jeremiah 17.9. Who has that? Jeremiah 17.9. Read it real loud. Miss Karen. The heart is des desperately deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Amen. Uh, <sighs> And it can't be cured. It's without cure. Mm -mm. So let me translate this hand. Hmm. Jesus said, why do you call me good? There's only one good. And that's God the Father. And God alone is good. Boy, I'm glad I came tonight. Mm -hmm. This is just so encouraging. I'm just getting just, you know, getting <laughs> going. up here. I tell you what, <laughs> are y'all glad you came <laughs> so far? Really? Amen. Yes. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Well, uh, it, it, it get, it, it's not going to end there, I can tell you. Uh, it, the, 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 the problem that we have Jesus has an answer for it. Amen. Um, we have a bridge. And that's Jesus. It's not me. I'm the bridge for the night just to try to connect you to Acts. But uh, uh, Jesus is the bridge. He, Jesus Christ is the way. He made a way to go from death to life. Amen. The problem began in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Fall of man. But from the very beginning, God had a plan. Yes. God had the solution before the world was created. Amen. Before all of creation. He had the remedy for all of this. Yes, he did. About then that goes on in the heart. Uh, in the book of uh, in the Old Testament, we have the prophets, which God reveals his plans to, and he reveals his plans of what he's going to do about this heart problem. Yeah. And uh, two of those uh, scriptures, one of them is Jeremiah 31, 33, 36, one of my favorite scriptures. Yes. Um, 33 through 34? 33, 34, right. Okay. That's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. Hallelujah. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Amen. Hallelujah. Right, hallelujah. Read, uh, let's go to Ezekiel 36, 26 through 28 now. I've got that too. You've got that one too. Just <clears throat> let's have it. A new heart also will I give you, mm -hmm. and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart mm -hmm. out of your flesh. Amen. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Amen. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And you shall be my people. And I will be your God. Thank oh. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I love those two scriptures. I know Thank many you. years ago, I, Charles Sidney preached a lot of sermons on that. And I actually had a lot of lectures on those two passages. And I got so much out of it. 
uh, way back when, but uh, uh, I've probably forgotten a lot of it, but I would have to look it up. But here we have a promise of the new covenant, what yes. he's talking about. A new heart, a new spirit, the Lord's spirit for anyone and everyone who gives up their old stony heart, turns it in, and gets a new heart flesh. God, and gets yes. a brand new heart of flesh. Yes. And oh, and God's promise is to write his laws, his ways, his statutes upon that heart and cause us to do them. Wow. He the, causes us to what it means is he puts the desire in our new heart. We have a new desire. Yes. To keep his statutes. Yes. Uh, we have a, a desire to walk in his ways. New desires within us. Amen. His desires become our desires. Amen. His ways become our ways. Amen. And that's what the new heart does for you. You Thank don't you, struggle. It just, he's doing it by his spirit. We just listen to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Salvation belongs to the Lord. He will do it. That's a promise. Amen. And God keeps his promises. Yes. And with a new heart, we'll <clears throat> fall in love with Jesus deeper. Amen. He grows deeper. God's word, this book, becomes more exciting. And Amen. prayer, prayer becomes just a uh, uh, natural. It just comes naturally. Prayer will become a part of your life. And Amen. it will just come. You want to pray. You'll want to pray. You won't say, we've got to pray. <laughs> we better pray. I mean, <laughs> it's getting worse. No, you'll mm -hmm. want to pray, and you'll want to pray constantly. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. The beautiful thing is, too, the things of this world will grow strangely dim, yes. as the song says. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite courses uh, through the years is As the Deer Padded for the water, so my soul longs for thee. Amen. You are alone. You alone <clears throat> are my heart's desire. This is, has to be God. And I long to worship thee. Oh, Amen. my God. I, Amen. I, I, when, when I think about this, I, I just am so consumed. Amen. By his love, by 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 this new heart. It's thank you, I Jesus. Long to worship thee. Yes, thank you. Do Jesus. you long to worship him? Amen. Is your heart long uh, for him and to be with him as a deer, a thirsty deer, searches and longs for the water? The desires of our heart become uh, the things of the Lord and to please the Lord. Amen. Look at, uh, well, let's see, I didn't get the scripture. Pro Proverbs 3 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Yes. All of your heart. Amen. And, and you have to begin there. People just quote this verse, I mean, two verses, and, and they quote them. And they trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not under unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love that. Thank you, Jesus. Lean not on your own understanding. Yes. Amen. Um, amen. I, I was reminded when I was doing this, Psalm 23rd Psalm, of course, um, that, that, that have, he will lead me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He will lead me in, in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And when you follow that heart, the new heart, you will not sin. You cannot sin. 
when you're following what God has written in your heart. You're no longer a slave to sin. Yes. I disagree that we cannot sin when when oh, we, we have that new sin. heart. But we, you said we, we you will not sin. Yeah, you won't. You won't do it. it I believe be I'm a right. sinner every day. I, fa I fail yeah. every day. And I know I have Jesus living in my heart. And I know I have a new heart. Yeah. But I'm still flesh. Yeah, well, you're covered by the blood, of course. I am, but I... You have a new heart. Right. And the heart tells you how to go and where to go. But even still, my okay. flesh leads me sometimes, or I choose to go... Oh. And, you know, I, I choose to let the anger mm -hmm. surface or whatever it is. Sure. I have to repent. What did God say about David? Well, I am cover I'm say? covered in the blood, but... We still have to, Paul said we have to die daily, that he die daily. Yeah, right. We do. And we take he was off, filled with the Holy we take Ghost. Off, we take off the old man. Right, but we have, to, we, we have to die daily. Man. We have to ask God's forgiveness every yeah. day. Oh, sure. we're, still, we're still sinners even with that heart of flesh. Right. Well, um, uh, here's the thing. You say we're still sinners, but we do not follow after sin. We do not deliberately sin. Correct. If you deliberately sin, then, well, you still have a remedy. I still have to ask for you forgiveness. You still have to ask for forgiveness. Yeah. What did God say about David? He's a man after my own heart. Mm -hmm. Look at David's life. Mm -hmm. So, does David live a perfect life, but God said he's a man after my own heart? No. What Paul addresses, what I like to see is, I like to see myself, I like people to see themselves through the eyes of God. How does God see me? Because that's what matters. Father, are you pleased? How do you see me? And his eyes look through the blood of Jesus. He sees me through the blood because I gave my life to him a long time ago. But brother, if I if I yeah. if I turned away today and just lived every day a sinner. Even though I have that, that heart of flesh, that would make me further and further yeah. away from the sure. Lord. Sure. And the only way he's going to see me that way is if I ask for repentance for, or if I, if I ask for forgiveness for those sins. The sins of my past are forgiven. Right. And if I was to pass away at that moment, then yes, he would see me in only that. He would only see his blood. Right. But every time I sin... Oh, just you, as you any can't. just as any father would, yeah. they're gonna right. want you to you, you know You cannot have a relationship with God and be in sin. Either doing it or unrepented sin. Sin cuts you off from God. You can have the the, the new heart, a new spirit, and then do things that are against what the spirit Spirit has taught you what the word says. Mm -hmm. You can do that. You're a free moral agent. You can sin as much as you want, anytime you want. And if you do not repent from that sin, it'll be held against you. That's right. Even though you have the blood of Jesus. What the blood of Jesus does is give us access to the Father to come and repent. Right. Without repentance, there's no forgiveness of sin. Exactly. And, that's, and, and the, this is my stand. The one who sins and doesn't repent has cut himself off from God. Right. And um, so uh, we're on the same page. Uh, Paul does right. address us as saints, though, in, mm -hmm. in, in the, the letters to the saints yes. at, at Philippi, uh, in the different places, and we're called saints. To the saints and and we're dressed as saints that's the in, way. Ro in romans 8 yeah. and 1 it says there's therefore now no condemnation yeah. but there is still conviction that when we oh. do something wrong the lord is going to convict. point it out he's going yeah. to convict yeah. it's going to prick us in our hearts and we need to still repent so on, on that i do believe we are on the same page well, but we we know the holy spirit was said for a number of reasons He's a comforter and he comes yes. along and when we grieve, Amen. he does this. But he also convicts of sin. Yes. The Holy Spirit was given to us to convict us when we sin. Yes. And when we sin, we have an advocate with the Father. 
who's just and faithful to forgive, forgive us, us our of sins. our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yes. And once again, we've reestablished or established ourselves yes. in the heart of God. Amen. And that's that's my uh, Hallelujah. theology. I, I have a lot, a lot more, <laughs> but on that particular matter, I think we're in agreement. Mm -hmm. um, but you can cut yourself off from God at, 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 at any this, point. But, mm -hmm. it's, but it's your decision. God's not going to cut you off. Right. He'll never leave you or forsake you. But I've seen so many Christians or so called Christians that, that it left him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're not a puppet. Right. And so. And he's a if gentleman. You, if you yeah. walk away, you're lost. Amen. You can you come can, back, though. Well, I, I think of, um, <laughs> uh, well, the prodigal son. Yes. He, he, he left, he took it all. <laughs> he wandered it all. Then, but he came to himself with yes. the pigs. And then he, he says, I'm, I'm, he, he, when he came to himself, I go back to my father. And, and so he, go, he goes back and says, beg for forgiveness. And all his father runs to meet him mm -hmm. there. And he said, this is my son who was lost, and now he's found, who was dead, mm -hmm. and now he's alive again. Yes. And he says that twice, by the way, two times. Mm -hmm. And so we have, um, <laughs> we have a clear-cut case. You can leave your father, <laughs> and you can squander everything you got, yeah, but you can't come, come back. back. And that's amen. the whole thing. Yes, and, amen. Um, the Holy Spirit is always trying to bring, I, I do believe the Holy Spirit is always convicting and urging. Yeah. And uh, there is a point when uh, the Spirit, I, I believe, the, well, I better not go there. That's not <laughs> in tonight. <laughs> We're going deep into that. Okay. Uh, did we do, well, I'm, no longer, I'm, I'm not a slave to sin. I mean, that's quote I'm quoting. I'm not a slave to sin. I'm a slave to righteousness. Um, my inner desire, to, uh, I'm no longer an inner desire to sin. I don't have a desire to sin. I don't think any of you have a desire to sin. No. You cut yourself off. Uh, but the, the, uh, the, my desire is for holiness. Because that's what we're called to, is holiness. And so we'll leave it there. At Romans 6, 14, 8 through 18. I've got that. Okay. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye, came, you became yourself, ye became the servants of righteousness. How about that? Amen. That kind of answers it, doesn't it? You, yeah, it goes right along with that conversation. What was that scripture? Romans oh. 6, 14 to 18. 14 to 18. 14 to 18. Uh, in there was you. You have come to obey from your heart. Mm -hmm. In other words, what God put in your heart, the new heart, and wrote on there, you've come to obey what God wrote in your heart. And that, in fact, your desire is yes. Show me. Yes. <laughs> show me. Lead me. <laughs> and so um, that's what uh, that, that's what we're talking about here. Uh, now you can really live in the spirit. Like Romans 8 says, live in the spirit. We can truly do that with a new heart and with this. In fact, we want to do that. Yes. That's my desire, and Amen. I assume it's yours too. It's just, a, what, I, I want to live in the Holy Spirit. Yes. And uh, uh, so, uh, and we can do that now. Uh, we don't have to be like that poor man in Romans 7, as long as we're on Romans, whoops. Uh, we on Romans. That poor man struggled, struggled, kept the thing I want to do, I can't do. The, and, and, <laughs> and, and it goes on and on. Paul's describing this poor man uh, struggling with sin. Struggling. Was he not describing himself and, no, and, and struggling with his own flesh? Him. No, he wasn't. Because you read, you read down, he says, Who shall deliver me? Who's going to save me? 
from the wretched man that I am who's going to save me. I thank God it's through Jesus Christ. That's who delivered him from that. No, uh, Paul wrote, well, I don't want to go into a field of my, my myth, uh, uh, get off track, but I, I could explain to you maybe afterwards how Paul wrote. And sometimes the, the writers in that day, how they would describe something and use it as a first person, but it not be them. But anyway, I don't want to, it's going to take it's too long to go there, and I, I'd be glad to tell you, but it, it, that, that was not, I heard all my life, in my young life, uh, up until I was about 50. <laughs> Amen. When I was young. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I heard that. That, well, that's Paul. If Paul, if that, uh, if Paul was having that problem, then I can understand why I have that problem. Keep falling into sin. I keep keep being drawn back into sin. I I mean, if it, if it's good enough for Paul, it's good enough for me. Just to be drawn into sin, constantly fighting, it, fighting, it, fighting. It. What does that scripture say? For sin no longer has dominion over you. For sin no longer has power over you is the word, if you Amen. want to know. For sin cannot control you. That's what that verse says. Maybe there's true or not. And, 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 and I, I, I can tell you why it's not Paul, but it would take me time it's okay. to show you. And, That's okay. and, I, and we'll have to abandon what I've spent hours on. No, we want you to go forward. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, okay, we'll talk about that later. But no, you do not have to sin. We sin, but we don't have to. That's right. The devil can't make you do it. Amen. Say, well, the devil makes me then you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then you the devil has no power over you. Amen. Every demon of hell has to be in submission to you. Yep. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit. That's not the, what I'm talking about tonight, but you know, we're going to talk about it in Acts. I mean, she's, she's going to be talking about it. Um, <laughs> we can keep the first and greatest commandment with that new heart. What is the first and greatest commandment did Jesus say? Jesus said was the first and greatest. Love God with your heart. So love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, with all thy strength. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. The Lord God. Well, we can we can keep that. We want to keep it because we have that desire to love God that's put in our heart, and we can not only love Him, but we can please Him more with our new heart. We can please Him. Um, I was supposed to check the time. Well, I'm gonna go. I want to read this by A.W. Pink. I, I don't, I, we'll take it a second. Hold on. Let's see. Um, I'm going to read a quote from A.W. Pink. I, can, I like this man. He was an author, pastor. You can read about him on, on Google. The God of Scripture can only be known to those he makes himself known. Nor is God known by the intellect, God is spirit and therefore can only be known spiritually. But fallen man is not spiritual, he is carnal. He is dead to all that is spiritual. Unless he's born again, supernaturally brought from death into life, miraculously translated out of the darkness into the light, he cannot even see the things of God still less apprehend them. And you shall seek me. Oh, no walk off there. And you shall find me when you shall search for me with your whole heart. You shall seek me. And he puts a desire in this new heart to seek him. Yes. To, say to be in his presence. <laughs> 
Access is granted, he says. Amen. Access to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are welcomed into his presence. Psalm 37, 4, as one we're all familiar with. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Thanks, G. I can just ask you, what is the desire of your heart? Is your desire to honor him in all things, in all you do, in all you say, is to bring honor to the Lord of glory? Is your desire to be in his presence? Psalm 1611, I love, <laughs> I love all these. <laughs> in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand are pleasures evermore. Amen. I've used that at a lot of funerals, a lot of funerals over the years. But this is also for us today, for those who love him with all their heart. It's not just for the dead. We can experience that uh, wonderful uh, presence of God, we, the joy that he spoke of, those pleasures at his right hand he talked of. We can enjoy to a lesser degree, of course. We can't enjoy it like we're going to enjoy it. Right now we can enjoy it just kind of. <laughs> but then we can enjoy it <clears throat> uh, full in its fullness. Another one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 27, 4. And this I got hung on the wall and then mine, I, 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 I grabbed a hold of this I probably back when I first got baptized with the Holy Spirit back in that day and it just became alive to me. It's a familiar scripture. Psalm, it's 27, 4 if you want to know. One thing I desire of the Lord and this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Amen. That's one of my favorite ones. Um, we have about time to wind it down. <clears throat> You could go on when you start talking about the presence of the Lord. Amen. And when you get into, into, into that stuff. And it's only for those that have the new heart. Amen. And have, 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 have given up what they had for what he had. <laughs> and uh, you're going to learn about, I'm sure, if you don't already know. Then we get to do the things that he did. The things that I say, God, oh Lord, let us see that. But you got to know what the Father's doing first. The trouble is, we try to do the things Jesus did, and God is not in it. Ain't going to happen. You can't do the things Jesus said unless God is doing them. And you see it. And you know it in your spirit. This is what God, how many times have you been suddenly going to pray for someone? And and, and it's like you either get that anointing falls on you and, and you can hardly stand up. Amen. And they probably can't stand up, <laughs> but that's all right. They fall in the spirit and they go out and, you, and you're just, just rejoicing. Amen. And God is doing something. Amen. That's what we want to say. Amen. Well, I, I could go on, I, I, but I, I'm not. Uh, let's, let's pray and uh, ask God to just get us to that place he wants us. You know, <laughs> we, I, I know you all got that new heart. And you, you gave up that stony heart, some of you, a long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> I think I was Amen. probably, I, was, I think I was 13, 12, I think. Wow. 12 or 13. 
and uh, when I got baptized. Uh, but a long time before that, they said, when I was a little boy in Wilmington, North Carolina, and the lady was keeping me during World War II, this during World War II, <laughs> walking down the streets of Wilmington, I would be telling everybody about Jesus. They told me. I didn't know this. But at my mother, mom and dad's 50th wedding anniversary a long time ago, people came and they said that I hadn't seen in all this. They said, all I talked about was Jesus. They want to tell everybody about Jesus. And I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> so, but, but it's because the person keeping me told me all about Jesus. <laughs> and so I, I just fell in love with Jesus. Thank you, I Jesus. Said, I love this man. And I, uh, but the whole thing is, you, you've got a new heart. You've got his heart. And he's written his ways on it. Follow his ways. Amen. Used to be a thing. Follow your heart. You remember back? I don't know when that was. I had a fortune but, cookie that said that. <laughs> yeah, follow your heart. You follow your heart, you're going to hell. Unless that heart has been replaced Amen. with the heart of flesh. Amen. By God himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, salvation belongs to the Lord. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Pray. We love you. We thank you, Jesus, mighty God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this time we've had together. Father, I thank you that you have given us these precious promises. So many. And Lord, especially of a new heart. You, Lord, have exchanged that old heart that we had. And you've given us your heart. Your heart. You've given us your spirit. Now, Lord, as we go out of this place, let us just keep in step with the spirit. And Lord God, just lead us into places you want us to go. Thank you, Father, Thank you, that you'll use us for your glory, because that's what we want more than anything else, that you be glorified, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.